What's going on guys, it's the Devil Zero back again, and today I will be doing a full spoiler review for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, go watch the film first, and come back later. With that out of the way, I want to start off talking about the look and directing of this film. As I'm sure everyone knows, this film was directed by Sam Raimi. Yeah, that's Sam Raimi, the same one who did the Evil Dead franchise, and the original Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire. The moment this film started, I knew Sam was back and I could feel his influence throughout the entire thing. I mean, in the fight scene against Shuma Gor I mean, Gargantos, uh, we have the distinct focus on bystanders, the quick ways the camera kind of moves around the scene, and in particular that like one long shot of America Chavez running towards the camera and away from uh, the Gargantos. Uh, not to mention, the color palette in this film was beautiful. Uh, MCU movies are usually very, like, gray toned and just in general very toned down visually but this time we had like proper bright and warm colors throughout the film and i mean i think they should just stick with this i don't know why they have their film so like grayed out but i think Raimi shows why it's better to have films with superhero films at least with like these bright warm colors going on it really makes everything pop out more which kind of fits because it's you know comic book films you know it should look like it's popping off the page a bit. Uh, also, his horror movie experience was on full display. As we see with, for example, the tunnel scene with Wanda, which was just like terrifying. <laughs> kind of how like we had that quiet moment where like they think she's disappeared or something. And then she just pops up out of nowhere past the door. And uh, we also get like these cheesy jump scares. Like I remember the one with like Christine, like seeing... um the uh what's uh like the dark strange and then like he dies and then like the third eye just pops up hey, even after he's like been impaled that was like really cheesy but like good cheesy and then um you know like daddy elfman's score also really matched the aesthetic well now i want to move on to the characters and the plot though the plot is pretty straightforward i mean stephen strange travels the multiverse as he's trying to protect america chavez from the scarlet witch who wants your children back? I think this benefited well from a simple story as it allowed for plenty of character work with Doctor Strange and Wanda specifically to happen. Speaking of which, I'll start off with Doctor Strange. I think he had a really good arc in this film that paralleled well with Wanda and him needing to move on from Christine and progress towards a path of happiness. You know, like they keep asking him throughout the film, are you happy? And giving him a Christine from another universe to talk to and get that closure with it was a fitting, a uh, fitting uh, way to like bookend their, you know, their dynamic. Um, so I like that, but I do see how some people think that, as a criticism, um, it was very unclear, and I do think they could have done a better job uh, explaining it a bit more. And I didn't like the idea that um, Strange just like had a sister who died, and it's only now being brought up, and it's just kind of like in a throwaway type of fashion. At the end of the film, it's a bit weird. Like, you think, and I know that they kind of made the excuse, like, oh, we don't talk about it. But, like, that's kind of an important thing to drop on the, the audience just at the end of the film uh, about, like, a character's backstory. But anyways, I think Dark, Dark Strange was a good uh, inverse to him, showing what would happen if Steven never moved on from Christine or uh, Supreme Strange, you know, the, the Sorcerer Supreme version of him, showing what happens if he uses his powers irresponsibly. Even if he does have good intentions, you know the famous saying, "Good intentions are paid, or uh, the road to hell is paved with uh, good intentions," uh, which is noted throughout the film when we see characters, you know, bring up his plan to defeat Thanos. Like at the beginning of the film in the church, we see uh, the uh, the fellow doctor like ask him, "Was it was that the only way?" And he says, "Yes." Uh, maybe that wasn't true. Maybe there was other ways. Maybe he could have used the Book of Ashanti to beat him. But yeah, um, I also like that. Continuing from Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange gets to work with like another teenage hero that kind of helps him open up even further. Um, and I, I do like the fact that they referenced No Way Home, and because it, that is that was like a big thing for Strange as well. And just I mean the Marvel cosmos in general, even if it was like a personal story. Uh, the use of his magic was also pretty cool. I mean, like it was a big step up from the first movie. It was more on the level of like Infinity War, where like. You know, we get the music battle. I love the music battle. It was so cool with uh, Dark Strange and, like, 
you know, we see him like summon monsters and like a buzzsaw. And then my favorite part of just like Strange using magic was him dream walking into like his own like old universe corpse and like controlling the souls of the damned. Like that was raw as hell, man. Like, <laughs> like it, it looked so cool. And like you had like the zombie strange like had makeup. You could obviously tell his makeup. It felt like early 2000s zombie movie makeup, which fits perfectly with like Raimi's aesthetic. And as far as like the end of the film goes, I do have a gripe with like the final scene, and that's and also like the mid credit scene as well. Um, when the film ends, we see Steven like, is a side effect, I'm assuming, from using the dark hold. He gets like the third eye, which is a reference to the comics. He has a third eye usually when he uses the eye of Agamotto, but I guess they change it up here a bit. Um, and he was like just screaming in pain while just walking down the middle of the street. But then we cut to him like walking really chipper in the mid credit scene until Clea shows up. And I, I don't really think that tonal shift works at all because it's just like you establish at the end of the movie there's this huge consequence and like this huge ramification. And then he's just walking chipper like nothing ever happened. It's really weird. That seems like something he would do, but like the tonal backlash doesn't really work. Um, but I was excited to see Clea played by uh, Charlize Theron. Um, she's, she's awesome. And I mostly just like... I'm excited for the next film because we're going to be exploring her, the Dark Dimension, and possibly Dormammu. Because if you guys don't know, uh, Clea is from the Dark Dimension. There are people who live there. And she is the niece of Dormammu. So that's going to be like a really interesting dynamic to have going forward. And uh, overall, I just thought Benedict Cumberbatch's like performance was great. And uh, it may, actually it might be the best he's done with the character so far. Briefly, I want to talk about America Chavez. Well, she was more of a plot device in this film than a character, I felt like we did get a good amount from her. Um, I'm glad that Disney stuck to like her uh, LGBT roots and like her upbringing with her two moms. Uh, although I do think they could have done more with that than make it like a arbitrary, not arbitrary, uh, like a kind of like a like a coincidental like you know backstory device thing, um, and like better representation. And, although I did catch the pride flag. Um, but also like her powers are just really awesome and th that was really cool um like seeing like the stars within the stars and the sound effect as well just her like punching portals um her dynamic strings are really cool too as i mentioned before and like uh i hope to see more of her in the future i do think she's going to be probably the, the young avengers now before i get to the main event i want to give my thoughts on the cameos in this movie for a bit and of course that's the Illuminati. You know, I'm sure all of you at this point have seen the film if you're this far in. Uh, first, I want to talk about Baron Mordo. It was nice to see a version of him again, as it, it was kind of awkward how they built him up at the end of the first movie, which was six years ago, by the way. And like, <laughs> it's like a rival and villain. And I guess we'll have to wait like a bit longer to see that pay off. But I, I did like seeing him again. Um, Captain Carter was cool. I mean, this being the first time in the MCU, we see an animated character jump to live action. Although it's not the same Captain Carter from What If. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be in season two. Uh, her death was like hilarious though. Like how, you know, five seconds before she dies, she just says, I can do this all day. And then she just cut in half. Like they, <laughs> they made her a bum. <laughs> Shit was funny. Uh, Maria Rambeau's like Captain Marvel was like the least interesting. I mean, to be honest, I, I, I like her beam struggle but with like Wanda, but like, I don't know, she 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 didn't do anything for me. Like, she didn't get a right correct. I went to the theater twice, and I didn't get a crowd reaction from her either time. Um, Anson Mount as Black Bolt was cool. Uh, he had the best glow up in the film. I mean, he went from this like god awful costume in humans and god awful just show in general. To, don't watch it if you haven't. But he went to like that to like a more comic accurate version of, a, of the costume. Like I love that he had the tuning fork and the wings and everything. It looks so good. Uh, and he died like arguably the most brutal death in the movie too. Thanks to a certain idiot I'm going to talk about later. But <laughs> he was cool. Um, seeing Professor X again, like just Patrick Stewart back as Professor X was cool. Um, I don't think it took away from Logan just because this is another universe version that's very distinct from the one from the original X-Men films, but I, I was awesome, like, seeing him in, like, the classic hover chair, 
the, like the green outfit and the theme from like the 90s cartoon uh and the way they visualized his powers reminded me of the show too it kind of like it was like kind of like sound like the mind waves type thing uh and he's the one who had his head on straight the most out of everybody in the illuminati and it's just kind of funny because he <laughs> he got folded too but you know um it yeah they're all kind of incompetent i mean just like how which makes sense because like they're strange essentially put them in charge of the entire planet and like having one little cabal that kind of controls everything is not a good idea but yeah um last we have john krasinski you know jim halper from the office as uh reed richards aka mr fantastic and i won't lie i flipped the hell out when i saw him in the theater like both times um he got the biggest pop in the theater easily and I thought he was awesome. I mean, well, I thought it was awesome seeing him. I'll get to his performance. Um, I, I I thought his performance was okay, but I don't think he really fit Reed Richards. When I think of Reed Richards, I kind of think that, yeah, he's a family man, and but like he didn't. And he, I think he captured that well with like bringing up, kind of referencing Franklin Valeria and like Sue and and them, right? But I don't think he really captured the smartest man in the room aesthetic or that kind of like because Reed can be very detached from like humanity at times because he's so focused on like his science. Um, it's kind of it kind of a meme, too. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I didn't feel it from him. But I mean, there was also the part that they made him a complete dumbass when he just revealed to Wanda Black Bolt's powers and thus his weakness, which got them killed. So, you know, there's that, but like, you know, uh, in general, I thought the cameos were, you know, they were pretty quick and they didn't distract from the story for me. And they kind of built up Wanda to be a more terrifying threat and gave like a massive teaser for secret wars by introducing the incursions. So that's kind of, it's, it's kind of exciting to get secret wars. I mean, there's the style of it, of just having this multiversal conflict with a bunch of characters, but I do hope they do focus on like what the actual comic uh, Secret Wars 2015 was about, which was the relationship between, you know, Doctor Doom and Reed Richards. But um, I don't know. I think that'd be pretty cool to kind of build that up, kind of like how they built up Tony Stark and uh, Steve Rogers' relationship in Phase One through Three. But uh, finally, I say the best for last, and that would be Wanda Maximoff herself, the Scarlet Witch. I think that Wanda was easily the best character in this film, and probably bar none the best villain in the marvel cinematic universe um since age of ultron we've seen her go from villain to you know the tragic hero and now finally back to being a villain well i know like her motivation is very controversial and i think i'll get to that in a future video um i felt that it made sense to me with what we were shown in wandavision and this film as well she was an absolute menace i mean it was really cool seeing her just be an unstoppable force like no one had a chance of beating her at all. Like, I'm not a power scaler, but I'd say she's at the top of the verse, like, easily. You know, like, reward, reality warping, you know, Black Bolt's mouth, turning Reed Richards into string cheese, and just, like, not to mention, like, tearing apart Xavier in the mindscape. Like, I'm pretty sure she tore his head into, not just, like, snapped his neck. That was, like, really brutal compared to what I'm used to seeing in these, like, Marvel films. So, like, that was awesome. Uh, both of my favorite scenes in the movie came from Wanda herself. Uh, my audience was like dead silent, and like I was, I got pretty emotional. I won't lie. When uh, she woke up from her dream of being with her kids, and just you know, she just woke up instead just being all alone in her house. That crushed me. Like seeing her character, seeing her character throughout like all these years and all the trauma she's gone through. It kind of just like, it's like an emotional punch just seeing her keep going through all this stuff. But yeah, um, the other one was at the end of the film with her realizing the monster she had become, you know, when Wanda was breaking down and she saw like her own kids were terrified of her and she finally accepted that they're gone. Yeah, it was really sad to watch, you know. Uh, I'm glad that her arc ends with her doing the right thing and like removing herself and the Darkhold from the equation. Although I don't think this is the last time we'll be seeing Wanda at all. Uh, my my guess and like my 
I guess my pitch would be to give her a redemption arc in the Young Avengers film and maybe have her reunite with some familiar faces, wink wink, if you know you know. But overall, uh, I would probably give Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness an 8 out of 10. Um, it was a fun ride and good enough for me to see twice in less than 24 hours says that um i don't think it's the best marvel film in the mcu but i definitely think it's in the upper echelon um and i think no way home is slightly better i think the emotional highs for me hit harder in that film but uh plus just the, the three spider-man i don't i don't think anything can beat that to be honest but yeah uh let me know your thoughts on dr strange in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more make sure to like comment subscribe uh, it, it would definitely help out a lot and it definitely help the channel out and grow. Um, but yeah, this has been The Devil Zero and until next time, have a great day everyone. See you later.